going to give her a hand, praise. She got to hear, y'all. I bet she should still do good. Now, I have, now we have Isaiah Myers playing the drums. Give him a hand clap. Now, now we have a, another sp special presentation by Shayla Wilson. Sorry, Ariana. Dan Shayla. Praise God. Praise God. Our great men of God, Bishop Elect Theodore Hall Jr. Bless him as he brings the word of God to us. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. At this time, praise God, we're going to have a selection by our youth choir. And following the selection by our youth choir, amen, we'll have a dance by our, our um, dance team. Amen. Praise God. Come on and get a youth choir hand praise as they come. Amen. Come on, young people. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Come on, young people. Amen. Praise God. You know, they tried to come up with them a new march, y'all. I'm going to show y'all what they were doing. They were trying to kill me. Y'all see Fred laid up here, can't breathe. Y'all go get in line so y'all can come up. Praise God. But our young people, praise God. We thank God for our young people because they always trying to come up with something new. Amen. And we thank God for our young people. Amen. Praise God. Because I let them, whatever ideas they have or may have, amen, I let our young people go forward with their ideas. Amen. Praise God. Because it's just awesome to know that they want to work. Amen. Our young people want to work and want to do things in the church. Amen. And I want y'all to know 
these gifts and talents that they display is not something that we make them do or, act, uh, uh, or tell them they have to do. We ask them, do anyone have a presentation or a gift that they want to display? And they'll raise their hand, and we let them do whatever they have that's, that's appropriate. Amen. For the service, we let them go forward. Because one thing about it, we want our young folks to grow up and be successful. Amen. I love Jesus. 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 Hallelujah. And y'all see them with their little tutus on. This was their idea about their little dance, the way they tutus. Amen. Come on and give Sister Benita a hand for making those nice tutus. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. She say she saw them online. They wanted, wanted too much money, but God anointed her hands to be able to make them. Amen. And we thank God for that. Amen.
our young people work hard. Amen. Hallelujah. We thank God for our young people. Amen. Come on and give them another hand praise. They did a great job. Amen. Hallelujah. I told them that was just a little song that was ringing in my heart that day, and they did a great job with it. And we thank God for our young people. Amen. Hallelujah. At this time, we'll have a dance. Amen. Hallelujah by our young people. Amen. Let's get Lieber one more time for such an awesome job emceeing on today. Amen. Praise God. I'm not being I'm not being partial or anything, but I love when Lieber and MC. Lieber is my friend. Come in, Lieber. He made me think about myself. I was so playful when I was growing up. He made me think about myself. That's probably why I love him so much. But come on, get Lieber one more hand. Praise, Amen. <laughs> praise God.
Sister Kelsey brought back to their remembrance that dance, amen. And she practiced it with them, and she was in the bike instructor. She did a great job, amen. Hallelujah. I love our young people. We got some outstanding young people, amen. My God, my God, you gotta love them, amen. Hallelujah. They did a great job. I got out of breath trying to do it, y'all. I was trying. That's called, Sister Hall, you need to exercise. Yes, yes, amen. That's called, I need to exercise, amen. I'm finna start right now. <laughs> Hallelujah, amen. God is good, amen. Praise God, we're standing all over the building as our pastor, um, the shepherd is in his house prepared to come forward, amen. Hallelujah, we're standing all over the building. How many of you know the Bible tells us that everything going down but the word, amen. Hallelujah, it's the word that's going to keep us, amen. Hallelujah, so at this time, come on and put your hands together for none other than Pastor Theodore Teddy Hall, Jr., amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Every head is bowed, every eye is closed. Dear God of the Bible, we come before you now as humble as we know how. Father, we didn't come for form or fashion, but we just thank you for our young people. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your mercy. Now, Father, as we look into thy word, Father, we pray that you would have full reign in our lives. All the motives and all the reasons for why we might be here, push them to the side. And Father, let your agenda come forth in our lives. Father, right now, you said in all thy getting, get an understanding. So, Father, help us. Help us to get a better understanding of the word of God. Father, we take authority over the spirit of offense. We come against everything that's not like you. And, Father, we release the anointing of God that will fall fresh on your servant even now. That I would preach from a place of joy and not from a place of pain. Father, we just thank you right now for the love that has been shown. And, Father, right now, we just say, have your way. Have your way in us and through us. Forgive us, God, of our sins of omission and commission. Father, we yield ourselves over to your hands that after hearing the word of God, our lives would never be the same. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. You may sit that, be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. How many of you just glad to be here? Come on, that, that's one or two of us, but how many of us just glad to be here? Amen. God has brought you here, and uh, you walked in under your own strength. Amen. And he, he gave you that strength. Praise the Lord. You ought to be happy about that. Amen. How about these young people? Amen. Can we celebrate these young people? Amen. Can we stand to our feet and celebrate them? Amen. And let them know how. Let, let them hear you all the way back there in the back where they changed it. Amen. How, how proud we are of them today. Amen. All right. All right. Hallelujah. What you know about Jesus? Say what you know about Jesus. He's all right. He's all right. All right, all right. All right, all right. Say what you know about the Savior. Say what you know about the Savior. He's all right. He's all right. He's all right. He's all right. All right, all right. All right, all right. Say what you know about the Savior. Say what you know about the Savior. He's all right. He's all 
alright. He's alright. He's alright. Alright, alright. Alright, alright. Hallelujah. I just I just want to hear a little bit of that. What you know about him? Anybody know anything about him? Has it been good to anybody in here? Uh, what you know about him? Do you know anything about him? What you know about him? Is he all right? Hallelujah. Oh. All right, I ain't, ain't going to give you I ain't, ain't going to give you just a little bit. Amen. You may take your seats in the presence of the Lord. Amen. I want to just say to all of you here today, amen, on this youth day, praise the Lord. I, it makes me reflect back to when my mom, uh, my, my mom really didn't raise me, but I thank God for Cora May, amen, because one thing about Cora May, amen, on Sunday, you didn't have a choice in my house, amen, there was, there was not a choice. Maybe y'all came up in some of them houses where you had a choice on Sunday. There wasn't no choice at my house. Amen. And I had to walk about three miles almost to get to the church. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I, I was a leader even then because I had me a little trail. I pick up folk on the way going. I don't like walking by myself. So, so I get me some friends. Amen. They didn't know why I got them, but I just didn't like walking by myself. <laughs> Amen. So I would pick up some friends and take them to church. Amen. Hallelujah, but I thank God, amen, that Cora may even when she didn't go to church, amen, and a lot of Sundays she didn't, but one thing she made sure that I went, amen, because they knew something about putting a child in church, amen, uh, they knew that if you train up a child in the way that he should go, that when he's older he won't depart, amen, that's not to say that we may not go out and try to experience the world, amen, because I did that. Hallelujah. But I found out that the world, all the world did for me was give me some criminal charges, get, get me in a world of trouble, amen, the very things that my mom them didn't want me to get, you know, I got. Hallelujah. Just like a lot of young people now. Now, this is not my message, but I just think a lot of times when you just think about why young folk really don't want to serve God, it's because the world just looked like it has so much to offer young people. I'm talking, I'm preaching right now to our young folk. It's youth day, right? And, and a lot of times, amen, what our parents and grandmothers and aunts, you know, did and, and tried to raise us to do. And uh, we just res resisted again. You know, we didn't, we didn't want it, you know. But as you get older, as you get older, if you haven't messed up so bad, amen, and then if you messed up royally, amen, you might be done went to prison or whatever, amen, God still let you come back, amen, let you repent. But, but a lot of times you don't have to go that route, amen, if you young people would understand that everything that the television portrays is not true. I'm going to say that again. Everything that you see on TV is not true, amen. When you see the, the rappers and, and, and Beyonce and, and all of them looking like her and Jay-Z, you know, don't got no problems and, you know, they balling and everything is fine. But, you know, the, the Bible lets us know, amen, that wicked people and evil doers going to soon be mowed down. Amen. And the Bible says, what does it profit to gain the whole world and lose your soul? Amen. A lot of our young people, we spend a lot of time on our cell phones, on Facebook, Twitter, and all those other uh, media uh, venues that's out there and don't even know the first book of the Bible. Somebody, somebody need to say amen to that. Amen. Don't even know the first book. But they, as much time as we spend on Facebook and Twitter, they, they could be done read the whole Bible. I can't get no help. Maybe I ought to say that to some of us adults in here. Amen. As much time as, as, as we spend on our electronic gadgets, amen, if we would be in the Bible a little bit more, amen, we'd be a lot better off. But since it's youth day, amen, I want to just tell our young people, amen, that there is a life that you don't want to experience, amen, and there is a life that you show sure enough want to experience. Amen. The life that you don't want to experience, amen, is that one that the devil is trying to tell you that your mom and dad and grandmas and aunties and uncles don't know what they're talking about, you know, and, and that what we see in the world and, and going out there to party and drink, you know, that that's the life that you want to live. But I, the, Bible, the Bible says, come unto me while you're yet young. Can I talk to the young folk just for a minute? The Bible says, come to me while you're young. Not when you get old. He said, come to me while you're strong, where you, can, where you can get out and work for the Lord. Amen. I'm, I don't know if anybody's troubled as I am, but it just seems like 
you know, for our ch children, our children. Amen. I don't know where we lose them, but, but at some point look like there's a disconnect. And I think when we come to church, we play a lot. Amen. Because there, there's no reason for a lot of these young children here, these babies here, right here, and some teenagers that's even out in the audience. There's no reason for you to have to travel the road that a lot of young folk have to travel. Amen. Like, a lot of young people feel like your parents raised you in church, and I'm talking from experience now. Amen. Because your parents try to raise you up in church, make you a PK's child, make you a church child. Amen. You resent that when you get older. You resent that. My mom and daddy made me go to church. But see, if, if, if you don't understand the whole purpose of why we're doing that, amen, it's because a lot of times you, 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 you think that we're trying to hurt you or don't want you to enjoy your life. But, but how, how much fun is it when, when you got to try to raise a baby and you a baby? Hmm. How, how much fun is that? And when you, say, when you say that my parents don't want me to have no fun, how much fun is it at night when the little boy that done got you pregnant, he out there ripping and running and playing? Amen. And pregnating somebody else's child. And you got to be home with the baby. Now, you said we was holding you back from having fun. Well, how much fun is that, though? At 2 o'clock in the morning when your baby start crying and hollering and screaming. Amen. And, and, and if your grandparents aren't doing the work for you, you will find out that that's not as much fun as you say it is. Amen. Am I talking to anybody here? It's youth day. Amen. Young people, listen. Hallelujah. Everything that we're trying to show you and talk to you about church is for your benefit. Amen. And a lot of times I'm wondering, why, why do we lose, though? You know, what, why, why does the world, why does the world seem to be able to snatch our children that's been raised in church? Just like these children, you know, been raised around the things of God. But when we get a certain age and get around uh, uh, away from around the church folk, we, we literally choose to take the other route. Because church ain't fun. That's what we say, right? Church is boring. What I just saw was not boring. What I just saw, what I just saw was not boring. I saw some young people having them a great. So where do we discuss? When, when, when did it get boring? When did it get boring? I, I'm, I'm, I'm literally asking a question now for even for my benefit. You know, when did it get boring? You know, when, when did it get so tiresome that when I'm able to make a decision whether I want to go to the club or go to the church, I will choose the club over the church. I will choose, really what you're choosing, I'll choose hell over heaven. The decisions that we make. This is leading right into, into my message today. I want to I talk to the young people and old people and people by way of internet, amen, because we're streaming live uh, by way of the internet. I just want to use for a thought, amen, uh, walking with God. Walking uh, with God. You know, um, I look at how much effort it takes to go anywhere. When you're getting ready to go to the clubs and go party and drink, it takes a little effort because you want to be the fly sister in the club when you get there. You, you know, you want your outfit to be showing everything that it can show. You, you, want, you want everybody to see what you're working with. Amen, because we're going in here to get some attention. Amen. We're going in here to get our drink on. We're going in here to get our smoke on. And it's really smoking, too. It's really smoking. You just don't know how smoking it is. Amen. But I want to I wanna just make it very clear, amen, that it, it almost would seem like the church is losing the battle. Because our children still going to the clubs. Our, you know, oh, yeah, yeah, they're going. And, and you may think they ain't going. They, 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 they say they're going to spend the night over with so-and-so. Amen. And you let them go. Amen. And they got a friend who mom and daddy let them borrow the car. And, and they wind up in places where we would not approve of. Amen. And, and, and they slip some clothes on that, you know, we, we, we wouldn't approve of. Amen. I know of some people in here, some, some teenagers, some 20-year-olds. 
If your mom and daddy could have walked into that club and saw you in there, you, you'd, have, you'd have crawled up under the table. That go past the hall, y'all. He in the club. He in the club. Tanya Quay, he in the club. Past the hall, he coming through. <laughs> yeah, we looking for the back door now. Amen. But listen at this. It ain't pastor, it ain't daddy that they got to worry about. It ain't, it ain't me that they got to worry about. Amen. But the eyes of the Lord is everywhere. The Bible says it sees the good and the evil that we all do. I think that we we more afraid of what mom and daddy going to say. And the Bible says don't fear that they can kill only the flesh. Because all I can do is kill your flesh. I can whoop it. <laughs> I can whoop it real good. Whoop it good. Whip it. Whip it. They didn't get many whoopings though. Not at my hands, but the Bible says that uh, we need to fear the person that can cast the body and the soul into hell. Why don't you look at somebody and tell them everything that glitter ain't gold. And everything that and everything that's rusty may shine. Mm-hmm. It may look a little rusty coming to church. I thought I worked that right there. It may look like it's a little rusty doing what we're doing. But if you if you if you begin to polish it and clean it up a little bit, get some get some brass cleaner and get some little other chemicals. Yeah, there you go. Brass oak, get some of that. Amen, and put that on it a little bit. After a while, and I heard this in the Baptist church, he said, and by and by. What looked like it wasn't worth nothing, it wouldn't do nothing for you, amen, wind up being the best thing you could have stumbled up on, amen. But I just want to talk about walking with God, amen, because a lot of us will leave God to go dance with the devil. Amen. And, and we will say, I'm having a good time. Amen. And I must admit, Amen. That all of my times in the streets, I couldn't say that it was all just bad. But I must say that it wasn't leading me anywhere. I have to say that. I wasted a lot of time, amen, walking in with the devil, amen, when I should have been spending more time walking with God. Amen. I want to encourage every young person today. Amen. It's youth day. I enjoyed myself today with the young folk. Amen. Y'all did an outstanding job. Amen. Come on, let's give them another hand. I want to thank everybody, and I'm getting ready to go to my text. I just want to thank everybody, amen, that worked on the prayer breakfast, amen, uh, that, that put forth so much effort, amen, into making uh, Angela's last project a success, amen. And if, if, you, if you missed that, if you missed the prayer breakfast, you missed one of the best prayer breakfasts I done ever experienced. It, it, we had a, a church full of folk. The church was full of people, amen, all the wall, amen. Hallelujah. It was a great turnout, amen, and all of those who headed that up. I thank Sister Nakia Brown and some of these others that worked with her and my wife and some of these others, um, um, Sister Campbell, amen. Um, hallelujah. They got on in here, and, and, and we, we just made that thing a success, amen, uh, 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 monetarily and, and, and uh, naturally, amen. It, it was just a win-win situation all the way around, amen. Sister uh, Co-Pastor Diane Watson, Amen. Bought a mighty word. Amen. And the only thing that disappointed me was that Bishop Watson didn't dance like I told y'all he would. Amen. But uh, I'm going to let him redeem himself. He, I ain't, ain't going to fall out with him. But I want to just thank everybody. Whatever you did in that program, amen, I want to tell you that the Lord is pleased. Amen. And, and whether nobody else is happy about it, Mother Grant is pleased. Amen. Let's celebrate Mother Grant. Amen. My head church mother. Amen. And uh, we, we did that. Amen. And, and I think that Ann was pleased. Amen. Hallelujah. Y'all made us proud on yesterday. And we can't say enough on behalf of my wife and the first family. Amen. How y'all made us look like an international fellowship. Amen. And I did great. Somebody said, now it's time for the word of the Lord. Turn with me to Proverbs, the fourth chapter, and verse 7. 
Proverbs 4 and 7, and I'm almost done. Amen. Proverbs 4 and 7. When you get there, say amen. 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 Read book. Are you there? Yes, sir. Proverbs 4 and verse 7. What does the word of the Lord declare? Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom, and with all your getting, get understanding. Proverbs 4 and 7 in the study Bible reads as thus. It says, it says, it says, amen. Wisdom is the most important thing. Somebody say wisdom, wisdom. is the most important thing. Is the most important thing. So, get wisdom. so get wisdom. If it costs everything you have, get understanding. My, 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 my thought is walking with God. If you're going to walk with God, you're going to need some wisdom. So the Bible says if it costs everything that you got, get you some wisdom. You know, it's all right to clap and run and shout, my brethren. Amen. But if we're going to get anything, we need to get some wisdom and we need to get some understanding. So we'll understand what was all that we worship you about? What was all of that about? What was all of that, you know? What was all of these scriptures about? And all that getting, get what? And if we're going to walk with God, we don't need to have a bunch of people that's, that's, that's unlearned uh, uh, walking around like they know about God. Amen. And, and all by getting, amen, and get you some wisdom. Amen. Hallelujah. So we're going to try to break some things down to you. What, what does it even mean to walk with God? What does it mean to walk with God? See, some of you, if you weren't here on uh, uh, Friday night, we, 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 we kind of introduced this to the church. So you're getting really a part B. Uh, if you want to get part A, I do believe we recorded it. Amen. But you're really getting a part B. What does it really mean to walk with God? Amen. Walking with Jesus is more than just coming to church. Walking with Jesus is more. See, if all you had to do was come to church, everybody would be on fire. If all you had to do was show up here, everybody would be on fire. So, because it's more to walking with God than to come. I'm, I'm going. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to bless God. I'm going to bless God. What you going to do for God? I'm going to church. You, you ain't helping God come in here. No, no. This is designed to help you. So you'll know what you need to do to walk with God. It's more, it's more than learning a few scriptures. Walking with God requires us doing more than learning a few scriptures. Because most of us know the Bible. I see all kind of electronics and all these brothers got these Bibles out here. So I got to be extra careful of him. Because these brothers know the Bible. They ain't carrying these Bibles and electronics and don't know nothing. So it's not a lack of us knowing something. It is in the ability to walk through what we know. Oh, shout out. Oh, I felt something right. Don't push me now. Don't push me. Hallelujah. Uh, but, but, but it's the ability to walk through what you know. It's more than knowing a few scriptures and one or two verses from the Bible and the giving of our money and our time. See, a lot of folk think, well, I pay my tithe. But you live like the devil all week. Amen. I come and I work at the church. I, I do what they ask me at the church. But at home, you mistreat your wife. I can't get no help if he don't treat you right. Ladies, just don't look at him. Just keep looking at me. He won't even know that you told me that, 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 that you kind of said, go ahead, Pastor, stay right there, right there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, Reverend, he do good for you. He do good. Now, they, they, they do everything he wants you to do, but boy, around here, they ain't worth nothing. But I love them, though. I love them. I love them. I give my money. I give my time. Knowing God requires more than that. Because we, we can do all these things and miss God and go to hell. Let's get this straight. Works of the flesh will not save you. Works of the flesh, me coming to church, me paying my tithe, me I can write. All of those, I'll be good, I'll be good. 
Being good will not get you into heaven. All of these outward things that we do in the flesh, we're trying to get kudos and credit with God. But that's not how you walk with God and please God. Huh? Except there is a conversion of the heart. That, you, that now uh, you want some wisdom and now you want some understanding and now you ain't just coming here just to be coming. I want more of God. I, I've made a mess of my life. And it's sad that most people that need to just hear what I just said ain't in church. Or if they hear, they really ain't here. And it's sad that you can be in a place where God is trying to talk and you don't hear him. Hmm. Did I just say something? Did anybody hear God right there? God's trying to tell us something about our attitude and our wickedness and how it means to walk with God. Most of us, amen, folk got to tiptoe around when they deal with you. They, they scatter you, really, amen, because of the way you carry yourself. Now, do you not really walk in with God? Y'all know some folk like that. Amen. You give them a little bit more respect. You kind of, you, you know, you walk around them a little softer than you walk around other people. Some folk, you just chop their head right on off. But with them, you kind of just get a butter knife and try to work on them. And with me, you had a straight razor. But, 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 but it's more. It's, it, it's more than these things. And, and the works of the flesh. Everybody want to be so good to get to heaven. You can be the most faithful folk. Y'all can do everything I ask you to do. Come here. Don't miss nothing. Pray. Uh, uh, sing. Tithe. Give. And still miss God. All of those are works of the flesh. I want to talk about walking with God. There's nothing you can do once you get saved that can earn you any more credit than coming to Jesus and you're on your way to heaven. Ain't nothing else you can do. Ain't nothing else you can do. Y'all, y'all, yeah, that was word there. Somebody said, amen, that's the truth, amen. Because once you come down the aisle, it's done. It's a done deal, amen. As long as you just come and really mean it and repent in your heart that Jesus died and rose from the dead, y'all can look at me funny all you want. Well, they at least need to do some more. Oh, oh, because if they come up here and confess Jesus and fall dead right then, they going to heaven. I don't care what y'all teach I don't care what you say. No, 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 no. Person come up here and get saved on Monday. Just murdered 29 folk the day before. If they was to die at this altar, they went on to be with Jesus. Now, y'all don't like that kind of teaching. Because y'all want to serve a God that get, you get credit with. I, 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 come here. Mm. We must have, we must have an intimate relationship with Jesus. And all that getting... We must have an intimate, the, the way, if you're married, I'm talking to married folk only now. To take, if you ain't married, say he's talking to married folk only now. Folk only. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you're single, this, this, this ain't going to help you. It may help you later, but not now. Amen. You've got to know Jesus like you know your wife or your husband intimately. Intimately. Into me. Into me. Intimately. The way you know your spouse. Well, some people say, well, I don't really know them, Pastor. Well, that's a true indication that you will never know the Lord too, though. Because you do need to know who you done yoked up with. Amen. Because God wants you to have a relationship similar to that one that you have with your spouse. He wants you to know them in, him inside out. Somebody say amen. Uh, 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 have, have that relationship with Jesus. His, his word must be the final authority in our lives. His word must be the final authority. I don't care what your opinion is, but his word. With, walking with God requires you to, to forget your agenda, forget what you're thinking about, and submit yourself. You know, that I'm, I'm, I'm still in my first piece of scripture I read. Amen. Get you some wisdom, and in getting wisdom, get you some, under, if it costs you everything today, get you a better understanding of the Bible than what you've been walking around with. He get mad when folk don't do right. He get mad. You, ought, you know what? You ought to be glad you got a pastor be upset with you when you don't walk up to the standards of the Bible. You ought to be, instead of getting mad at me, you ought to celebrate that. You ought to get me a cake and take it home with you, have my name on it, for, put a picture on top of it, amen, and put the 50 on it, put, a, put 50 candles on it. But don't put them in on it because you're too broke. You may not get a big enough cake. Get you just the numbers, 5-0. Somebody say amen. amen. Holly, don't be mad at nobody because they want you to come up in God. You get mad if they, you get mad if they got some rules and regulations and trying to force that on you. 
Don't you get mad if the Bible tells you to love me even though I despitefully talk about you and then slander your name. Y'all ain't clapping right there, Reverends. Reverends, y'all need to be clapping with me now. Y'all yeah, need to get with me now. Amen. Because we're we supposed to be first partakers of that. They done hung us on the cross and put nails all in us. And we're going to talk about fire. Kill them. No, you're going to say, Father, forgive them. For they don't know what they're doing. See, I'm talking about walking with God. We got too many people going to church. They ain't with God, though. They ain't with God. Amen. They're not, Reverend. They're not. They're not. We're just going through the motions. We're coming in. Oh, shut up. Don't, don't, don't nobody get upset with me. Can y'all, could, could I just flow in my gift? Let me tell you something. All we want to do, this brother playing the keyboard now, whatever gift that we got, whatever it is we got, if you could sing, preach, teach, dance, or whatever, we just want to come to church and be on parade. Amen. That's, right. That's all we want. Yeah. It's my time to shine. Right. This ain't about us shining. Right. Amen. This is about us working together to advance God's kingdom. Yeah. This is about walking with God. It, it ain't about promoting you. We, we got too many folks want to be famous in church. You know, yes, okay, come on, help me, Reverend. Amen, we want to be famous. Like Amos Cookies. Hey, man, let me tell you something. Why don't you look at somebody say, I don't mean no harm about this. But ain't nobody special up in here but Jesus. This is his, this his program. It ain't about how cool we are and how many cups cup lunch looking good. God the one got us dressed up. You ought to look good coming into his house. You ought to come in here with your best apparel on. With your best perfume, your best cologne. Amen. Why? Because you're coming to serve him. Somebody say walking with God. Amen. When you walk with God, you ought to look like you belong to God. Amen. God sure imposed to be blessed. If you walk in with God, amen, you may struggle for a season, but after a while, and by and by, the car do come, the house do come, money in the bank do come. Now listen, you ain't got to get happy about that because the season that you're in right now, the job is evading us, but you know what? I'm going to keep pounding heaven. I'm going to keep telling God all about my trouble because after a while, I see myself in my future and I see myself doing a whole Oh, yeah. You ain't got to get happy about what's going to happen for me. Tell your neighbor, say, you don't need to celebrate me. Amen. Tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, I'm going to encourage myself. You ain't got to encourage me. I'm, as a matter of fact, I'm walking with God. That's all the encouragement I need. Matter of fact, he told me I'm gonna have houses and lands, and I'm gonna. He told me I'm gonna have this stuff, but he didn't leave me there by myself, though. He said, "But with all of that, you are gonna have some persecution." When you're walking with God, you expect persecution. You expect the people closest to you to put a butcher knife right in your spine. What you mean, the one close? Yeah, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. The one that's breaking bread with you. You expect it to come from them. Mm -hmm. Jesus said the one that's dipping, it, dipping in the bowl. Yeah, yeah, that one. Yeah, yeah, it's that one. It's the one that you're having iced tea and, and, and all of that. Yeah, mm -hmm, cornbread. Uh -huh. Surely not them. Surely not me, Lord. I'll be with you to the end. Uh, uh, no, not is it I? Watch out for everybody that want to know, is it I? That'll preach right there, is it I? <laughs> his word his, it has to be the final thought in our lives. In, in other words, Jesus' words are in me, and I am in his word, day and night, and loving every minute of it. Let me tell you something. I got a few more scriptures. I told y'all I was almost done. I ain't got a whole lot of Bible for you today. Amen. But let me tell you one thing. And all thy getting, get some wisdom. Amen. Quit coming to church and being defeated. 
Quit coming to church with that, amen. Quit coming to church and, and being upset with folk, amen, that done done us wrong. Uh, folk, uh, that folk might done, you know, done some things that's not pleasing. You hurt you down through the years. You've been sexually assaulted, amen. Family members took advantage of you, amen. Let that, let that go, amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And get some understanding. All of that was for your good. No, it wasn't good what happened to you, but it was good for you, amen. Hallelujah. God would take tragedy, amen, and turn it into your ministry. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. God would take the very thing that you said was so awful in your life amen turn that around flip it over and use that very thing amen to catapult you into a place where you never thought you would be somebody say amen today I pray yeah 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 somebody say walking with God yeah, 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 and loving and loving uh, uh, every every minute of it, amen. Because His Word is that final uh, uh, authority, amen. Loving every minute because the joy of the Lord is my strength. Uh, don't nothing make me no more happier than coming into His presence. Uh, should nothing bring you? I don't care how good He look. I don't care how fine He is. I don't care what she looked like. She could be a dime, amen. But look at here. You ought not feel as good with Jesus as you do. You should feel better with Jesus, amen, than you do with anything on this side of the cross amen walking with God brings comfort amen and I know some of us get comfort from a lot of other things like southern comfort I ain't talking about that not that I'm talking about with Jesus and the joy of the Lord is my strength. Uh, 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 uh. I want you to turn amen with me praise the Lord uh, to Luke 9 and verse 23 Luke 9 and verse 23. Luke 9. And verse 23. Luke 9 and verse 23. When you find it, say amen. amen. When you find it, read, read it. And he said to them all, If any man will come after me, mm -hmm. Let him deny himself yes. and take up his cross daily. How often? Daily. On the weekend. Daily. And follow me. Now, if you're going to walk with God, you, you got to be willing to suffer every day. Yes, sir. Every day. You got to be willing. To, see, I don't care what nobody say. Toting the cross is, 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 it ain't easy. All the movies that I done seen, Jesus had to have some help toting his. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. It reminds me of a story. A man was down on earth. He was catching all kinds of trouble, amen. His cross was too big for him to bear. He was down here just struggling and really going through. So he died and went to heaven. And Jesus took him to the cross room. He said, since your cross was so hard to bear, I want you to go in here and I want you to pick out the cross that's fit and suited for you. So he went in the room and he looked at all the crosses. And uh, he said, I don't want that one. I don't want that one. Surely I don't want that one. I found me one. He found a, he found a little one over in the corner. It was in the corner. A little one. He said, I'll take that one right there. Jesus looked at him and said, hmm, I don't know why you want that one. He said, because that's the one you bought up here. Yeah, that's the one you bought. Amen. Uh, all of this is what we're talking about. We can't take and we can't stand. These light afflictions, which last only but for a moment, work it for us a far more. See, you got to take your little cross. If you want to know what it is to walk with God, you got to walk with God when things are going so sure enough ugly for you. I mean, so sure enough ugly. You got to know how to dig down deep inside of you and say, you know what? Crack may be calling me. Cocaine may be calling me. That woman may be calling me. That man may be calling me. Amen. I, I hear you calling, but I hear another voice saying, hold on, soldier. Hold on. Pick up your cross. Deny yourself the pleasure of doing what you're getting ready to do. I'm just going to leave that church. They don't, they, don't, they don't care nothing about me. Uh -uh, deny yourself that thought. Amen, because that's what God wants you. Amen, because you can't run from church to church because you can't have your way. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's an unstable person. Because uh, if I can't have my way, I just skip over here across the road at, 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 at this church over here. No, no, you, you unstable. Might have a little bit of bipolarism. 
Mm -mm. You got to be able to stay somewhere and bear some things. He said, if you're going to walk with me. The Bible, that, that was 9 and 23, right? Uh, the study translation uh, reads like this here. Uh, and, and, and Jesus, see, it's a, mine say Jesus said. Uh -huh. That means somebody with authority talking. He said, and Jesus said to, to a few of them, uh-uh, uh, -uh, uh, -uh. and a few of us going to go through. All of us going to go through. Amen. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's why, you know, uh, a lot of folk don't really want to serve the Lord. Amen. Because you know when you come over here, amen, you just thought, well, I thought when I came to Jesus, he going to wipe every tear away. It's going to be joy in the morning, joy in the evening. And it is. Amen. But you still going to go through some fire and some affliction. Amen. Oh, yes, you are. Amen. And Jesus said to all of them, if people want to walk with me, it say follow me in my Bible. But my thought is walking with God. He said, if people want to follow me, they must give up everything they want. How many of us just had to get off the boat right there? I got to give up everything I want to follow Christ. You know why that's there, Reverend? Because a lot of times what we want ain't really what God want for us. Yeah, and I know, and I know, and I know the Bible says he'll give you the desires of your heart, but that's, that, that's because God is a person that gives us a free will, amen, to choose things. But you got to even understand how Jesus prayed. Jesus had that same opportunity to do what he wanted to do, but Jesus chose the more excellent way of following Christ. He said, I'm going to walk with you, God. He said, and I, I, when he was in the Garden of Gethsemane, amen, with all the sins, your sins, your sins, your sins, my sin, all y'all sins. When he was in the Garden sweating and praying, amen, felt like saying, Lord, if it be possible, let this cup pass me by, because he he really didn't want to go at that point but then he flipped the script he said but whatever my plans was don't even hear that but not my will but thy will be done if you're going to walk with God, you got to forget what you want and accept what God wants for you. Y'all don't like that right now because we're so, we so accustomed to just getting what we want. This is what God said. Yeah, he did say that. Amen. But do you know God is too wise to give you something that would destroy you? Do you know that? God is, and he's too loving too. A lot, I heard T.D. Jake say this one time in one of his sermons. He said he had a friend that could sing. Amen. And you know, Jake can really get you known in the body of Christ. If, if Jake pulled your ticket, amen, and start working with you, you get invitations from all over the world to go places. But, but he had a friend that can sing and message got back to Jake that his friend was mad with him. Say his friend thought that this next musical that he was going to have that he was going to front line it. Amen. He was going to put him up there. He just knew he was going to do it for him and he didn't. And Jake didn't. So he say since he sent that word by you Jake said let me send something back to him. He said you tell him I was looking after him. Because the gift that he think that he have that he's ready to go out to the magnitudes like he feel he's not ready. He's not ready. But see, in his mind, he's ready to get out and sing before thousands and be seen in 74 countries all over the world. Jake say, but I thought we were friends. He said, if the only reason why we are friends is so I can put you on front street so you can be noticed, he say, we're not friends. He says some things you got to protect people from even though they think they're ready for it. Amen. Somebody say, I believe that. A lot of folk want to be in a place where they're really not ready to be. Hallelujah. And, and it's sad that you can be up there doing it. I, I, I know people like that myself. You know what I'm saying? Y'all have been in some church settings too where somebody say God called them to preach. Y'all ain't got to say amen to this, but it showed the truth. They say God called them to preach and you done been in the service and you said to yourself, how in the world did he call him? I think somebody else called him. Mm -mm, God didn't call them. How many of y'all, let me see show of hands. How many of them have said that once in their lifetime about somebody? God didn't call them. You ain't got to be scared to say it because you be sitting and you just, I'm just, I just say it. Right. You know what I'm saying? A lot of times when you're walking with God, God give you insight to other folks. It's sad that everybody who's blind and crazy think they can see. Ain't, ain't it so true that everybody now in the world, Jay-Z, Beyonce, 50 Cent, and all of them think that if they die today, they going on to be with God? I just saw when they buried, way, way back they buried uh, one of the rappers, amen, they buried him, and one of, one of his comrades, one of his comrades, one of his comrades, amen, said in the interview, well, God took one of his angels back and we all will see him at a later date. Now, wait a minute. I'm saying that to make a point, though. In his mind, 
he think that's serious. But in our eyesight, we know <laughs> that the wages of sin, but the gift of God. And when you're not living a life worthy of fruits of repentance, baby, you don't make it into the kingdom. I ain't sending nobody to hell, but y'all ain't sending them to heaven either. Mm -mm. Just like I can't put them there, you ain't, you ain't either. Because if you're going to walk with God, I'm writing my text. If you're going to walk with God, you're going to have a good understanding of scripture. Amen. And you're not going to be moved by everybody that call themselves reverend. Because you open a church. God, I'm going to open Go on, open it. And some folk going to come. Because there's some folk going to some crazy stuff. I done been to some of them. I said, y'all can stay here. And they stay right there. They just as faithful and complain. But they just as faithful as you can. Boy, it's crazy over here. And, and you're part of, well, you just as crazy as them. You're just as crazy as them for staying there. Huh? Folk will be committed to nothing. I'm going to say that again. Folk will be committed to nothing. It ain't going nowhere. It ain't got the potential to take you nowhere. We'll keep running in that little circle where we run in our 30, 20, 40, having our little meetings. We dressing up, looking good, going, spraying our cologne on, going up in here to be noticed. To hear a compliment about my cologne. To hear a compliment about, man, them shoes, they made out of jeans like the same material suit is. Ain't? Yeah, they sure is. Uh-huh. They is. They bad, man. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. They bad. They bad. They bad. What good that got to do with anything, though? Here we are just going around looking good and ain't going nowhere. Y'all ain't going to clap with that. That's okay, though. Amen. Our car look good. Everything look good. We look good. Amen. But inside of us, there's nothing. Amen. There's no commitment to walking with God. Amen. Because when you walk with God, amen, you're more committed to God than anything on this side of the cross. Amen. Your job, your husband, your wife, your kids, your career, ain't none of that. Amen. And see, you know what? Yeah, the clap's going to thin out when you really start walking with God. Because sometimes you'll have to start making decisions. Uh-huh. This for some of us. God said, you prophesy now. There's some decisions that some of us, even in this pulpit, got to make real soon like too. It's some folk that I'm kind of associating myself with. I got to just cut them off. I, I don't really want to do it because they kind of okay with me. But where I'm getting ready to step into and where I'm trying to go I got to say you know uh, I, ain't, I ain't being funny or nothing uh, and, and maybe some family members I don't know but I, the Lord said you got to say it. it's some folk that I just got well, <laughs> you coming over no I'm not coming over today no I'm not no you coming out no uh -uh, I'm not going uh why? Because uh, I'm walking with God now. <laughs> and, and when you start walking with God now, you begin to see everything around you that ain't trying to go higher in God as a hindrance and a weight now. And I'm, I want more of God. Amen. It's hard. I don't know about y'all, but it's hard enough for me to walk with God and go higher than to be trying to walk with folk who really don't want to walk where I'm trying to walk, go where I'm trying to go, nor do what I'm trying to do. Can I, can I throw this out there as you walk with God? It comes to a place in your life where I'm at right now, and y'all should be getting there too. That the Bible is the final authority. Can I say this to every preacher here? Preachers, you cannot walk with nobody who's not trying to walk according to the scripture. You, they may be good people. They may be fine. But if they're not trying to walk according to scripture, why are you with them? I'm talking to preachers now, who we pull in our circle, who we associate ourselves with. God said, no, 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 no. That's a hindrance to you. Don't let your good be evil spoken of. Mm -mm 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 -mm. If you're not trying to walk with God the way the scriptures say walk with God, how is that your partner? How can two walk together? I'm doing right, you ain't, but you my boy. Oh, you my girl. Y'all ain't saying that. Let me talk to y'all a little bit because like they with me. I'm y'all like like y'all touch on them and say, wake up. Wake up. Hallelujah. How, how you gonna be hooked up with somebody hanging out with them sister and they they don't pay tithes, they don't give offerings, amen. Uh-huh, they don't come to Sunday school, they don't come to prayer, they don't they ain't pressing their way in. But now you know what? See, being that they don't do it, and you at every you doing what the what's required of you. After a while, and I heard that preacher say bye and bye. They're gonna tell me, Oh, you go you well, well, well you well, you see, I'm all right now. I don't go to none of that. No, you really ain't all right because right now there's a way that seem right, amen. You just think you okay, but up the road aways is some trouble. So you got to deny yourself There's some people that I like But God's telling me You got to let them go I just told them that Friday night Didn't I just tell y'all that As I go up to the bishop tree And go up higher Somebody put it to me like this You finna go up to an executive level in ministry now 
I like how that sound too. I said, what I'm going to? They say, an executive level of ministry. So therefore, those who are going to be hanging with you at the boardroom and hanging out with you has to be somewhere up on that level, somewhere want to be that way. To tell your neighbor, say, the game done changed. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, the players still the same. They ain't unchanged, though. And God is saying to all of us, you got to deny yourself some of the things you want. Pick up your cross. Yeah, some folk going to get angry with you. There's some folk that you just can't have these conversations we've been having. Cut that off. Amen. So that now we can go where God wants us to go. You know why a lot of us can't? Oh, yeah, yeah. A lot of reason why we can't take off and follow God is because we got ankle weight on. What's the ankle weights, Pastor? It's them people that we should cut loose. It's them things that's holding you back. You can't run fast with ankle weights on. You got to unstrap your ankle. Ankle weights good for a little while, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ankle weights in the athletes in here. You can put ankle weights on for a little while and run with your little ankle weights on. But when it come race time, amen, when it come down time for you to go in, to try to get the ribbon, don't you keep them weights on you. I can see you now in the block with ankle weights on. You ain't finna win. But boy, if you've been practicing them ankle, uh, in them, in them ankle weights, amen, and, and they say Deion Sanders used to run through the orange grove with boots on. That's how that boy's so bad, amen. Say he used to run with boots on in the orange grove and all that sand, amen. But come time for the track meet, amen. He gonna strip down, get as light as he can, amen. Gonna feel like he still might be running in sand. But when the gun go off, pow, the race already over. Tell you, they says over before it even gets started. Yeah, 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 because we done stripped off all weights. Because we're walking with God now. Amen. Tell your neighbor, say, there's some folk you've been walking with. There's some folk you've been talking to on your phone. Hey Amen. You, you just got to, you know, let them go. Just got to let them go, bro. They ain't bad people. They going to heaven. They ain't lost. They just ain't trying to go where you trying to go. And if they ain't trying to go where you trying to go, you best to believe when, when you on fire and you got some little dull something with hardly no smoke to it, you trying to drag them, you, they gonna make you tired after a while. Now your fire done went out cause you would not put them on to the side. Say, listen, I done done as much as I can for you. I got to keep this thing moving, amen, and follow after God cause I want all I can get from God. Deny yourself. A lot of things I want, God is telling me I got to let go. And let me tell everybody this. And if you let go some, I pray that them people don't take it personal. But I pray that they may wise up and say, you know what? I need to get on fire. I need to get on board. I need to get connected. Amen. Because anything that's not connected to what you connected to, amen, they, they, they're, not, they're not trying to help you. Brother won't do things. Love him. I love these brothers out here. Amen. And you don't want to help them? Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. God said we got to deny yourself whatever you want that's what it said Jesus said to them all if people want to follow me they must give up what they want and they must be willing to give up their lives daily to follow me see y'all that's why y'all sit down preachers y'all making me nervous now y'all sit down hallelujah hallelujah get a little nervous but 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 you got to deny yourself daily how many of you will agree that your body be telling you don't go, don't do this, don't pay your tithes, don't? How many would agree to that? That, 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 that the body be telling you that, the flesh be telling you that? Amen. But let me tell you one thing. See, you can't, you can't walk with God and listen to that, though. You can't. See, when you don't have but a little bit, you're saying, you know, I talked about that earlier, so nobody want to hear think I'm talking about them. So I talked about this earlier. You know, you got folk that should be paying and giving like they ought to, but because they don't have but a little bit, they're going to wait till they get much to start sowing like they should, and God ain't receiving that. Amen. See, see, God don't want you to sow into him when your, when your, when your money train comes. God wants you to be sowing when it's already rough. Huh? He wants you to sow when it's already rough, when you ain't got but, you know, after you put this in, you don't really know halfway what you're going to do. Huh? But I'm just going to trust God. I'm going to trust him. See, we got to get some folk like, 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 like this. That's saying, you know what? Not my will. I'm walking with God now. If God say give 10%, it ain't 3%. It ain't 4%. It's 10%. If God say love them that despitefully use you, that's exactly what he means you need to do. That means that a lot of conversations that even I have had, 
God convict me first. He ain't convicted nobody else. I ain't talking about y'all. I'm talking about how you whoop me. Because whom God, I'm so, I'm so glad God loved me. You know why? Because he whooped me. Do he whoop any of y'all? He whoops me. Tell me, brother, you, you got to get it together. You want to walk with me? Hallelujah. Uh, uh, I was going to argue yesterday. Sister Hall, you, didn't, you probably know I was going to argue. I was going to argue a little bit yesterday. I was going to fuss. I had to take the truck to get it worked on. And, and I'm always, I'm kind of like a little clean freak when it comes to cars and stuff. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. No, it wasn't. No, no you're in church. <laughs> Let me tell you something. While I was out doing what I was doing to be prepared to go, and I wanted to argue. I, I ain't talking about you. I'm talking about me. I want to fuss. I'm going to say it again. I wanted to fuss. I felt fussing would be justified too. Mm -hmm. yeah, I felt it would be justified. So, but after I did what I had to do, now God said, now listen, today is your prayer breakfast, right? Why would you go in there and start up something with her? Get her all upset. Amen. Now she got to go and try to put on the front with the people like she all right, Amen. even with you. Amen. Yeah, cause when she mad with me, she'll get mad with y'all. Yes, <laughs> y'all don't know how that works. I know y'all don't know how that works. Why she doing that to me? Because she mad with him. Y'all don't do that, though. I know you in control of that. Things ain't right at the house. You come right on up in the church with your little attitude on. What's wrong? What's wrong? What's wrong? Ain't nothing wrong. Oh, yeah, it's something wrong. It's something wrong. But you know what I did? Did what I had to do. And I heard the voice of God saying, don't you open your mouth. Don't you see, but most people don't hear God because a lot of times women, God telling y'all, you finna upset this man. You finna go in here and upset him. Shut up. And you go on in and go on and do what you're going to do. And then you wonder when the brother get a little huffy now, you know, because he going to swell up. He going to be looking stupid. You know, he is. Uh-huh. Uh -huh, bro Wilson, we are. Yes, we are. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Now, 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 now you done done something that you know gonna mess with me. Now, well, why you acting like that? Well, you already know my response was gonna be to this. But I thought you were growing in God. I thought you was too. Yeah, I thought you were growing too. You knew it was gonna bother me. Well, I, I didn't think you were gonna act like that when you should have been thinking. I'm not delivered yet. I don't got that resurrected body yet. I'm still human. But I walk with God. I'm going to tell y'all my stories so they can help y'all. I had to deny myself what I wanted to do for the sake of the prayer breakfast, for the sake of somebody else's concerns above my own. And because I didn't fuss, it got so cute to me because uh, uh, I believe she called me uh, uh, somehow we talked on the phone or something and she was so sweet on oh no no I, I might have called her and she said okay bae okay but if bae would have told her what I wanted to say before I left the house that phone conversation would have been something like this uh uh Sherry is you there mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. break my jacket that's what I called for and she still left my jacket but she was so sweet on the phone when I called her about the jacket. But if I'd have shined and done what I wanted to do, what I I'm going to go right back to tell you what I want. And like I say, y'all can play with this thing all you want to. That's why the ministry, people can't move forward in God. That's why we strap. And that's why we just come to prayer breakfasts and come to church and we sit up in here like we all this here. And we ain't really doing nothing, Reverend. We ain't doing nothing. Amen. I don't want this info. I told mother, mother just now. I said, I don't care who want to keep pastoring 20 or 30 folk and stay just like we are. Amen. That is not the desire for my fellowship. That is not my desire to be like this. And if it's going to go, you know what God's telling me? You going to change something. Amen. Come on. Amen. Uh -huh. Well, well, well. No, no, they don't. No, 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 no. Not them. Not them. You. If you're gonna go anywhere, you're gonna change some more. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
If we're going to walk with God, we're going to deny ourselves daily, pick up an our cross, we're going to walk with him, we're going to be things that we want to do, and there may be some things we want to even say to each other. It's certain things we can't say to each other. Mm -mm, mm -mm. I don't care how private it is or whatever, we cannot say it. We take it to the Lord in prayer. Because a lot of things we think ain't going to damage people, you will say it, amen, and you think that it didn't damage them, now nah, they don't even want, oh God! You done damaged folk and you thought you were saying the right stuff. When all God is requiring from us is to take it to the Lord in prayer. You, 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 you leave, leave that alone. Leave that alone. And just take it to me. I hear you when you pray. And if they saved, they'll get it. They'll get it. They'll get it. If they spend any time praying and fasting, they'll get it. And you know what? Your relationship will be so much better then you going in with a sharp tongue, thinking you you're thinking you got butter on it. Somebody say thank the Lord. I got one more scripture. And I'm gonna let you go. Can I give you one more scripture? Amen. Amen. Let's look at Matthew 16:24, and we're gonna close. Matthew 16:24. Matthew 16:24, and we're gonna close. Matthew 16:24. Matthew 16:24. When you get there, say Amen. You there read book? 16, Matthew 16, 24. Yes, what did it say? Then said Jesus to his disciples. What did he say? If any man will come after me. I want you to know we're in a whole nother gospel now. I want you to see how important this is. We're in a whole nother gospel. What did he say? If any man come after me. Uh-huh. Let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Jesus said to his followers. That's all of us. Somebody say that's all of us. Jesus said to his followers, if people want to follow me, they must give up everything they want. How many of us are willing to do that? I'm going to tell you something. Now, don't lie to yourself either. Because if you're not willing to give up everything you want, you ain't ready to walk with God. And I know this, this is hard teaching, but it's the truth. It's the truth. If you're not willing to give up everything, you're not ready to walk with God because God's plans may be different than our plan. Are you willing to deny yourself? Your, the Bible says man plans his life. No, a man, 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 man steps his own little steps. Man plans, but God orders his steps. There you go. Man plans his life, but God orders his steps. You got to be willing if you're going to walk with God to say, God, I know I want to go south, but if north is the direction I need to travel, please give me the ability to change those things inside of me that's seeming to be what I really, really want for what you really desire for me. My, my desire is to see everybody walking with God, not doing what you want to do. When your flesh talk to you and tell you something that you know that's not right, don't let your flesh keep having victory in your life. Because let me tell you something, even God saying, don't you think you're going to trick God? Because even though God's going to bless some people even still, but as he bless you again, don't think it's going to last forever because you know you've been on the treadmill of life forever anyway. God will give us some of the things we want only for us to lose it later. Right. Y'all ain't saying that. He will give you the desire of your heart. He will let you have some things. But it won't, you won't keep it. You won't keep it. It'll only last for a season. So, but if you really want to keep what you got, be willing to say, Lord, this is what I want. But if it ain't what I need, take it away. Take it away. Help me to deny myself. He said, if you're going to follow me, you got to give up what you want. Ain't that what I just said in verse 24? That was uh, 1624, right? Hallelujah. That's what he just said. Amen. Then Jesus said to his followers, if people want to follow me, they must give up everything they want. They must be willing to even give up their lives to follow me. I'm talking about walking with God now. Oh, the, the clap's standing up now. Sister Moore, they're standing up. I got to give up what to follow him? Your life. You know why you'll give up your life? Because the life that he has planned for you is a lot better than the ones that we got. Mm -hmm. It is. It is. Listen. I got some more. But guess what? My time is up. And I thank you for your ones. Hallelujah. We're standing all over the building. Come back tonight and get the rest of it.
tell you never say we, it's changing it's changing brothers it's changing if we're going to go do anything in the body make any effect in the kingdom we got to change young people if y'all going to do anything in your life and you're going to keep going to the club keep balling keep hanging around people that ain't got nothing to offer you you're going to always have what you got sometimes you got to break away from folk that you love and think a lot of I'm here, I'm here to tell you that. As God begins to do different things in your life, there's a lot of people that you may think they're not hurting you. But let me tell you something. If they're not helping you, they're hurting you. Are y'all listening to me softly, musicians? Softly, softly, softly. Listen, listen, listen. Y'all continue to play now. I'm not fussing. Play softly, but don't, don't stop playing. Just soften it down a little bit for me. Hallelujah. I shouldn't have to talk so hard to get over the music. Amen. Hallelujah. Keep playing, son. You're doing good. Hallelujah. But listen, listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. I read something, and I'm always reading. I love to read. And, and, and if you want to speak better and articulate better, become a better reader. If you're having problems talking, become a better reader. Good, people who read good talk well. Listen, at, listen, listen. If people are adding anything to your life, I read this here on Facebook. He say, it say, it say, if your presence can't add anything to me, your absence don't mean a thing if your presence doesn't add anything to me your absence doesn't make any difference because we should make a difference in each other's lives when you show up to me it ought to make a difference when I show up to you it should make a difference we should impact each other's lives for the better of each other not that I get all the benefits and you stay down there but come on up a little higher if you're here today and you're not saved I'm not offering an international I'm not offering a denomination I'm not offering none of that I'm, you know what I'm really offering today a closer walk with Jesus so I just feel that we, we, we're right at the precipice of I feel like we're standing preach. I really do I just feel like what's inside of me there's a king man and I'm not saying that's not in none of y'all but I just feel like the fellowship and the ministry and going up to that next level is what God is calling us to can you hear him calling you if you're not where well, you know you need to be in God Jesus is waiting the Bible says, the day that you hear his voice harden not your heart Young people do die and they do go to hell. Yeah, yeah. At the point that you come to understand the difference between right and wrong, heaven and hell, you a candidate for one of them. I'm going to say that again. That's too many big words. Uh, when, when you, If you too and don't know the difference between right and wrong, you go to heaven if you die either way. That's the truth right there. If you don't know the difference between right and wrong, you can't go to hell. It's impossible. The only way you go to hell is is that you got a good understanding that what you're doing is wrong and if I should die in my sin, I'm going to hell. If you don't have a good understanding of that, you, you, you're a candidate for heaven. But don't use that as ignorance. I didn't know because God knows what you know. Don't you know? Because he knows what you're going to say before you say it. He knows what you're going to think before you think it. But don't play with God, young people. Don't play with God. Don't, don't, don't think that you're going to make it in on your mama prayer, on your daddy's prayer, huh? on grandmama prayer. The only way you're going to make it in is on your own prayer. That you're old enough to know that, hey, you know what? I'm disobeying my mom and daddy. I'm, I'm bad in school. I'm defiant with teachers. You're a candidate. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Because if you're slick enough to bring the poor car home and change alphabets and numbers and all of that there and lie and talk about you left it at school, you know the difference between right and wrong. Yeah, then you you candidate for one of the two. Everybody here, okay, okay, all right, all right. What you need, sweetie? Cut, cut, cut me off, cut me off, cut my headset off. 